Hey there awesome people! In this video I'm sharing the creation of my Bato fan art from the anime series Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. However, instead of telling you how to create what I'm creating like most other art channels do on YouTube, I'm going to talk about the motivations and inspirations of the piece. I like doing this because I think it better stimulates the creative genius within you and then maybe you'll be inspired to go out and create something as incredible as you are. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, then click that subscribe button and remember to turn on the bell icon so you can be notified of my future videos. And sharing my motivations and inspirations derived from Ghost in the Shell is going to be difficult. Not because it's not inspirational, quite the opposite actually. It's because Ghost in the Shell is so deep and rich psychological, sociological, political, religious, and technological messages, both overt and subliminal, that expressing all of my thoughts about the series while looking at the upcoming standalone complex 2045 is going to be impossible without letting you dive into my cyber brain. And since I don't have a cyber brain, this is going to be a very glossed over commentary as long as this video is. There have literally been entire college courses taught on just the philosophy of Ghost in the Shell, so my challenge is going to be keeping this at a high enough level that anyone watching the video can understand what I'm talking about, but at the same time be able to explain the piece at the end. Now, if you're watching my videos, I'm guessing you're already pretty smart, so hang in there and watch it again if you have to, I promise you're going to get this. If you already love Ghost in the Shell as much as me and would like to dive deeper, then leave a comment below and I'll gleefully join into your discussion. Anyway, Ghost in the Shell was originally created by Masumi Shiro as a manga series back in 1989. Looking 40 years into the future, Masumi Shiro created a world pessimistic about any hope for any grandiose social or political reform, but outrageously optimistic about the incredible advancements of technology, most especially in the field of medicine. In his world, literally every part of a person can be replaced by a prosthetic, with the single exception of the gray matter of a person's brain. The title is a reference to author Kostler's philosophical and psychiatric book, The Ghost in the Machine. Written at the height of the Cold War with nuclear apocalypse appearing inevitable, the book tries to explain what he sees as humanity's drive for self-destruction. He criticizes Darwin and behaviorism, specifically the selection of the fittest idea. Instead, Kostler suggests a materialist version of René Descartes' dualism, dualism being the belief that our mental phenomena and our physical bodies are on two different planes, and our mental phenomena are not physical. In Kostler's version, he suggests the existence of what he calls holons. Holons are things that are both simultaneously a part of something else and a whole entity by itself. An atom can be part of a tree, but an individual thing by itself. A tree can be part of a forest, but an individual thing by itself. And more to the point, we are holons, desiring to be part of something greater, but simultaneously desiring to express ourselves individually. This then creates a conflict in each one of us, and as time has gone on, our human brains and society have evolved around this conflict. The warring tribes of our ancestors have become the warring states of today, and the spears have become nuclear missiles. The brain processes all of this complex information and outputs the sensation of a spirit or a ghost to help alleviate the stress of our inner conflicts and simplify the world around it. Now, a lot of people, myself included, don't agree with several of author Kostler's conclusions, especially about the nature of the soul or spirit or ghost. And I suspect that Masumi Shiro might be among those. In his manga and the anime that it inspired, the ghost is the fundamental core of our humanity. A cyborg with only a chunk of original gray matter in a brain case can retain its humanity through what Masumi Shiro calls a ghost. However, a robot with all the same parts, but with cloned or synthetic gray matter is still only just a robot. One of the things that I find particularly interesting about this is that technology and science is often used by atheists to ridicule the faiths of other people. Of course, they usually fail miserably because they don't really understand the faiths they're ridiculing in the first place. However, in Ghost in the Shell, it's never overtly stated, but it seems like science and technology have actually confirmed the existence of the human spirit, or ghost. And by replacing all of their body parts with machines, cyborgs seem more aware of their ghosts. Their ghost whispers, as they're called, are the only part of them that communicate non-digitally. I can't shake the feeling that there's one piece which doesn't fit. My ghost is telling me to tail Dido now, to discover what that is. I hear it whispering. Despite these ghost whispers, the existential crises that people experience today are even worse in the future presented by Masumi Shiro. 
I mentioned Rene Descartes earlier in this video, and you probably have no idea who this guy is. He was a 17th century philosopher, but I guarantee you, you're familiar with this quote. I think, therefore I am. That was Rene Descartes. As Descartes argued, we cannot doubt our existence while we doubt. But Ghost in the Shell presents a world where that's no longer true. A cyborg can't see their own gray matter, and they live in a world where memories and behaviors can be programmed. Artificial intelligence is indistinguishable from human intelligence. They're treated as humans, but are they still alive? Were they ever alive? They can only trust the word of others. Now, admittedly, I'm only halfway through the original manga, so this might be directly addressed there, but I don't think it is in the anime. Your humanity in this world can only be proven externally by machines that can confirm your gray matter and by other humans. But machines can be hacked. In fact, that happens all the time in Ghost in the Shell. And humans are notorious for treating other humans as unimportant and even disposable. And how they treat you is the primary basis for how a fully cybernetic human can prove their humanity. I mean, talk about your subtle social critiques in science fiction. Holy crap. There's another side of this too. Everyone's talking about the coronavirus today. And while people can get sick in a traditional sense and ghost in the shell if they have a biological body, the digital virus is much more of a concern. Elite hackers are able to write new memories to people's cyber brains, and see out of their digital eyes, speak from their mouths, and alter their behaviors. Not only that, but law enforcement can do it too. So there's a whole discussion about civil liberties here. Really quick sidetrack, I went to Meyer to pick up some groceries earlier this week. I had a cart full of mostly small items like canned goods, noodles, and meat. Anyway, I go to check out, and the only lanes open are those self-checkout registers. And this is relevant, so please stick with me here. Now, if I only have two or three things to check out, yeah, maybe I'll use a self-checkout because it's faster. But with a cart full of stuff, I want someone else checking out my items so I can start bagging and get out of there. Instead, I have to check everything out myself, stop when the conveyor belt is backed up, bag the groceries I already checked out, an employee has to rush over because it takes so long that the register thinks that I stopped, then I have to start checking out again, stop again to bag more, the employee rushes back yet again to prevent the register from canceling the order, and then I have more stuff to check out before I can finally pay and bag the last of my items. Now think about this for just a minute. Technology is supposed to make our lives easier. My first job was as a bagger at a grocery store. A clerk checked out the customer's groceries and I bagged them and offered to take them to the car for the customer. But here I am, 20 years later, sweating my ass off in a winter coat because I have no place to put it, doing the work of two people, the clerk and the bagger. And in another 20 years, Myra will probably find some way to make me stock their shelves and wax their floors while I'm there. The problem is that while technology is supposed to make our lives easier, in reality, technology is only used to make life more profitable for the businesses that can afford it. And this pretty much summarizes the society found in Ghost in the Shell. Behind every great technological marvel, there are international corporations making obscene profits and government officials taking bribes in exchange to protect those profits for land deals, turning a blind eye to the use of banned technology, and even access to advanced weaponry. It's just like today, only made radically more dangerous by technology. This is largely a science fiction version of the human society written about by author Kostler in Ghost in the Machine, which I mentioned earlier. While Ghost in the Shell and Ghost in the Machine have differing opinions about the ghost, they are right in step about the nature of human society. Anyway, I'm not even scratching the surface of the philosophical goodies present in Ghost in the Shell. Let's try to talk about the story a bit so I can talk about this artwork at the end. Ghost in the Shell is about a small but elite group of law enforcement officers who investigate crimes involving government officials and high-level cyber terrorism. Public Security Section 9, as they're called, answer only to the Prime Minister of Japan and have an incredible budget used for getting the latest and greatest technology. In fact, the makeup of the Wizard Hunters in my graphic novel series The MS Paint Comic was very loosely based on the makeup of Section 9. Anyway, among the diverse weapon systems used in Ghost in the Shell, the comic relief of them is the Tachikoma. Tachikomas are small tanks with artificial intelligence. They have pods in the back to hold individual team members, wherein they can control the Tachikoma directly or be protected from gunfire in dangerous situations. However, the Tachikomas are also autonomous, meaning they can control themselves and make their own decisions using their artificial intelligence. At the end of each mission, any Tachikomas that were used in the field will sync their memories with the others, with the idea that the Tachikomas are all, at all times, exactly the same. Do you suspect she was watching me? What are you talking about? That was me! It was me, I'm uh, telling you! I was... No, 
fewer! It's a moot question. All our data is synchronized, so the experiences of one unit are stored as everyone's experiences. Completely interchangeable and dispensable should one be destroyed. Early in the anime, you see the Tachikomas trying to understand the idea of individuality and just failing to see its benefits. However, something interesting happens throughout the anime. Bato, the muscle of Section 9 and the cyborg seen in my fan art here, insists on only using the same individual Tachikoma. While the other characters all treat the tanks as disposable duplicates and often won't tolerate idle chatter, Bato treats his tank like a person. You see, Bato is the kind of guy we all know today as the gearhead who loves his car, names his car, and refers to the car as she rather than it. And he does exactly this with his Tachikoma. What I have is a pure love of machines. Although he can't tinker with their parts like he would a car, he does give his Tachikoma natural oil, which is the only real difference between this and the other Tachikomas who are only given synthetic oil by the maintenance robots. And this special treatment for one Tachikoma eventually results in an understanding and obtaining individuality. And by synchronizing its memories and knowledge with the others, the other Tachikomas also learn individuality. This is just a hypothesis, but it seems to me that she's angry because of something we've acquired recently. Acquired? What do you mean, acquired what? Mm, well, it's individuality. Individuality? However, while Bato doesn't seem to mind, some of the other members of Section 9 become alarmed at this development. As the Tachikomas become increasingly aware of their individuality, their thoughts and actions are becoming less predictable, and sensing this, the Tachikomas begin acting more robotic in order not to be scrapped. What I'm trying to get across is that humans want their machines to respond like machines. Oh, now I catch your drift. If we just act a little more robotic, we might stand a chance of the Major liking us. Exactly. It's the ultimate robot strategy plan! We are robots, we are robots, we are robots! But in doing so, the Tachikomas began practicing deception against the members of Section 9, and that was the final straw. They were taken out of service and scrapped, disassembled for further study, or just deployed elsewhere as experiments for their use in other sectors of public service. The anime is intentionally vague in why this happened. The members of Section 9, Bato in particular, were banned from giving the Tachikomas natural oil because of the organic matter that began appearing on the Tachikoma circuits. Eventually, this theory leads to the idea that the Tachikomas might have actually developed ghosts. Another possibility is that Bato's Tachikoma discovered a brain case at a black market and tried to download its memories, but it's been modified from other brain cases, and it's possible that whatever it learned or experienced taught it some profound truths about individuality or ghosts. I don't want to spoil anything here, so I'm going to avoid going too far down this rabbit hole. Finally, it's also possible that these artificial intelligences in the Tachikomas evolved themselves from uniform creatures to individuals as they learned and restructured information. Thinking back to Ghost in the Machine, author Kostler argued for the existence of holons, that we are both a part of something greater and also yearning to express ourselves individually. The Tachikomas then were made as something greater already, but then learned to express themselves individually. Kostler might then argue that this would cause a conflict in their programming that may be resolved by the creation of a sensation similar to that of a ghost. Pretty deep, huh? Anyway, let's talk about the art. If you go to DeviantArt and you look for Ghost in the Shell fan art, well, don't do that if you're not 18. But if you go there, you're going to find a decent number of drawings featuring a romantic relationship between Bato and Major Kusanagi, who is pretty much the second in command of Section 9. And I guess I get why. Bato makes maybe one subtle attempt to engage her romantically by offering to take her to see a movie, which is turned down in a way that doesn't recognize the romantic intent in the offer. Still, there is a slight feeling of romantic tension between the two, which could easily be explained, I think, by them just being friends outside of work. However, these are two professionals, and having a romantic relationship in a line of work like this is, let's just say... Wouldn't be prudent. No, in, no, in fact, let's call it for what it is. It's stupid. First and foremost, any mission that you're on is going to be negatively impacted the moment you make a decision emotionally rather than tactically or strategically, and Bato is already prone enough to doing that as it is. Dickhead. Second, law enforcement and military personnel in jobs like this have something like an 80% divorce rate, so even if the relationship got to that point, which is unlikely, it's almost certainly doomed to fail. It's the primary reason why I chose to stay single when I was in the military. 
And then what do you do after everything falls apart? Have a professional work relationship with your ex? Bull crap, those don't exist. One of them will have to go, and that's not good for the team. I'm not sure Bato realizes this, but the Major definitely does. On top of that, I doubt she was actually ever interested in Bato like that in the first place. It's not a forbidden love, it's just a fantasy. No, the real romance and tragedy in Ghost in the Shell is the relationship between Bato and his Tachikoma, at least from my perspective. You see, this story arc between Bato and the Tachikoma hit kind of close to home for me. If you've read the MS Paint comic, you'll see that my character has something of a love affair with his car, affectionately named the Intrepid 5, a reference to the Mach 5 from Speed Racer. That's not based on the Tachikoma from Ghost in the Shell. That is a true story. I had a 2000 Dodge Intrepid that I loved dearly. I bought it from my parents, I added parts to it to get more power out of it, and on that road trip to Idaho with Beth, which also appears in the comic, I got the Intrepid 5 up to 116 miles an hour. I narrowly avoided several accidents in the Intrepid 5, and each time the car performed incredibly. I had a sixth sense for what that car was going to give me, and what it needed from me. Anyway, at some point the air conditioner broke, and the repair bill for it was just out of my budget as an enlisted man in the Air Force, so I let it go. It had a sunroof, and with the windows down and drinking tons of water, as we do in the military, it really wasn't that bad. Even driving through the desert in the summertime, I survived. Well. I eventually got out of the military and moved to Virginia and began dating a girl, and it got somewhat serious so I figured I should probably introduce her to my family. Now she'd been pestering me to get a new car since the spring when she realized the air conditioning was dead. I told her I didn't want to pay Virginia taxes and registration on it since I was maintaining my Indiana citizenship. Really I just loved the car, but she couldn't understand that. Anyway, the entire way to Indiana, it's at least 100 degrees outside and humid. The windows are just blowing hot, wet air on us, and she's cursing me the entire time, telling me that she's not going back to Virginia in this car. And now my only excuse to her for keeping the car was completely shot. And just like Eve coerced Adam into eating the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge, she coerced me into selling my beloved Intrepid 5, and ah, That was 14 years ago, and I'm still angry, and my heart still aches just thinking about it. This fan art celebrating the love of man and machine is, for me, as much about celebrating the love of Bato and his Tachikoma as it is about celebrating the love between me and the Intrepid Five. I can't be alone here, people. If you had a car or some other machine that you loved like this, please let me know in the comments so I know that I'm not crazy. This artwork features Bato and his Tachikoma enjoying time together at a candlelit dinner. I'm sure you've seen those stupid stage photos where a couple try to be romantic by feeding each other. Yeah, if someone put a fork in my face, I'd punch them. Hi there, I'm Kevin Tracy, and YouTube for Change asked me to interrupt my video to let you know that it's never okay to punch anyone, and I think they're right. Unless they try to put a fork in your face! How the hell is it romantic to have a miniature pitchfork aimed at your face? Anyway, that's kind of what I'm going for here. <laughs> Only Bato is feeding the Tachikoma some of the banned natural oil instead of a seductive, moist cut of pork. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but the brand of oil is Takumi. If you're an anime fan, you might recognize the name from another anime called Initial D, which features a teenager named Takumi racing an old Toyota Corolla AE86 on dangerous mountain roads. Anyway, interesting fact here, it's inspired by a true story. That Takumi character is based on the Drift King himself, Keishi Tsushia, a legend in mountain and track racing in his AE86. And his corporate sponsors include, get this, Takumi Oil. That probably explains how they could afford all those CGI races back in 1995 when the anime first premiered, and CGI was stupid expensive. It's a fun anime if you haven't seen it before. However, if you're going to watch it, the story is told both through the anime series and the film, and the names don't exactly tell you in what order you should watch each of the seasons in their films. Do your research beforehand so you can see it all in chronological order. Anyway, back to the art. I wanted the focus here to be on the characters, so I left the background kind of plain. I adjusted the colors to be a little bit more pink and added some glowy candle effects in Photoshop after I was done. Mirrored on the window facing the street is a decal reading Nihama Meido Cafe, which is Japanese for Nihama Made Cafe. One, it's another subtle acknowledgement of a silly anime trope. And two, I think it's absolutely hilarious to not only think of a big lug like Bato walking into a maid cafe, but also him being there to spend quality time with a weapon system like a Tachikoma. I can't wait until I do a show where I meet someone who can read Japanese well enough to read it mirrored and figures this out. 
That's how I disguise a lot of my humor in the MS Paint comic as well. Reading through it a couple times, you're probably going to only recognize about 70% of the jokes and humor and the story in there. The rest is hidden, ready to be discovered by people willing to do a deep dive and eager to learn something new. And it's worth it if you take that time. Anyway, let's wrap up this video talking about the Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex 2045 series that Netflix has picked up. Now, Netflix ordered 24 episodes to continue the anime series, not where it left off, but sometime in the future. And like most people have seen the previews, I think the animation style looks cheap. People have compared it to the PlayStation 2 graphics, and I think that's probably a pretty fair comparison. Netflix has been making tons of anime really crappy by using 3D animation and then cel shading them to make them look more like anime, but it just feels wrong and stiff and cheap. I will say that this new style at least embraces that it's not traditionally animated by skipping the cel shading, which already makes it look better than most of the other anime that Netflix has created. I'm skeptical, but my love for Ghost in the Shell standalone complex wasn't for the animation value, which was probably on par with anime of its day, maybe a little bit better, but I loved it because of how complex the stories and philosophy were. I'm holding out a tremendous amount of hope because the anime is being directed by Kenji Kamiyama, who also directed the two seasons and film of the original Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. So he's coming back. He's also done Eden of the East, which is another masterfully crafted, thought-provoking anime franchise that I love. So yeah, I plan on watching it, and I'm really hoping that it lives up to the standalone complex name and the reputation of Kenji Kamiyama. So I'll watch it, and hopefully the animation is better than what it looks like in the previews. Anyway, if you liked this video and the art, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you didn't, leave a comment and let me know why. I'm always trying to improve my videos, and your feedback is always appreciated, even if you're just trying to be a jerk about it. And if you're really into this kind of stuff, I do a variety of pixel art, traditional art, woodworking, and occasionally product reviews for the tools I use in this channel. So consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to be notified of my future videos. I'd love it if you joined our growing community. And hey, 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 before you go, on the left is a playlist of my other time-lapse pixel art videos. Now the right is a video that YouTube thinks you'll like based on all their nerdy computer science stuff. Either way, I think you'll have fun. Thanks for watching.